Nearly a week after President Ramnath Kovin signed the Citizenship Amendment Act into law, the unrest across the nation refuses to die down. From the students' protest in the national capital to the opposition leaders calling for a Bharat Band, the anger continues to build up against the CAA and the NRC. The Uttar Pradesh and Karnataka police has imposed Section 144 across various districts of the states and prohibitory orders have also been imposed in the northeast uh, in, in northeast Delhi. The anti-CAA protests continue across the state of Assam with government employees boycotting work across various campuses. Students are holding solidarity marches over the police action against students. As Prime Minister Modi and Home Minister Amit Shah have reaffirmed their decision to not repeal the act, the opposition has said that it is not just a Muslim fight, but it is a fight against the regressive, divisive and unconstitutional legislation. Huge number of people who are for and who are against both groups should not be allowed. So taking into consideration what has happened in various parts of the country, we do not want such a situation to take place in Bangalore. So we have imposed section 144 in Bangalore city from 6 a.m. of 19 of December to midnight of 21st of December for a period of three days. CNN News 18 Senior Editor Politics Pallavi Ghosh is joining me on the phone line. She's tracking the opposition's nationwide protest today. Pallavi, a very good morning to you. You know, uh, the opposition had come under a lot, lot of criticism for uh, failing to take to the streets uh, against the government's policies. But it seems the student movements across the country have now jolted the opposition out of its slumber as well. Oh, yes, absolutely. But, you know, the opposition parties, they were also trying to be careful because they didn't want to hijack what was essentially being seen as only a student, non-political movement. But, you know, political parties are political parties and they're going to use this opportunity to hit out at the BJP. So, apart from these protests, which we're going to be seeing today and, you know, changes even within the allies of the BJP, their stand as far as the Citizenship Amendment Act is concerned, or their, their big protests which are planned over the next two days. I mean, very quickly, the Congress Party, for example, on 28th, Day of December, which is their foundation day, is also going to have nationwide marches reading out of the constitution. Similar protests, of course, are going to be intensified by Mamata Banerjee in the whole part of West Bengal and in down south as well. So certainly an all-out concerted effort by the opposition to come together to actually show solidarity with the students, one, and second, to accuse the BJP of dividing the people. You know, Pallavi, uh, the way several chief ministers have come out and said that they're not going to implement uh, this uh, new law, whether it's Mamata Banerjee or Captain Amrinder Singh, uh, it's also becoming a centre versus state fight. It's also becoming a fight uh, to have more autonomy and more uh, decision-making powers for state, especially in the face of a rising and more powerful centre. Oh, yes, absolutely. And, you know, uh, I mean, when states like, say, Chhattisgarh, where Bhupesh Baghel says that I'm not going to sign the NRC at all, and when Mamata Banerjee says, over my dead body, it's their way of trying to show the center that you cannot arm twist one. But if there's any reason or cause for apprehension for the BJP, it also comes in from, you know, uh, parties like, say, the BJD and the JDU, which, while supporting the bill on the floor of the House, hmm. are now questioning the Citizenship Amendment Act. That could be a worry. I mean, and these are states which are really coming up for elections, like Bihar, like Delhi. Hmm. So these could be worrying signs for the BJP, though the government is very clear that there is going to be no backing down. Well, if you stay on with us, I'll come back to you. But before we do, let's listen in to what CPIM General Secretary Sitaram Yachuri said uh, in his appeal to the people to join the protest in large numbers. I am appealing to you to come and join in large numbers at the protest tomorrow organized by the left parties which will join the citizens protest march as well against the Citizenship Amendment Act and the proposed NRC National Register of Citizens. These measures are very decisive steps being taken by this Modi Shah government in order to disrupt the unity of our people, in order to undermine the fundamentals of our constitution. Pallavi Ghosh continues to be with us, but we're also joined by Revati Rajivan from Bengaluru and Runjun Sharma, my colleague from New Delhi. Let's go across to them as well. Runjun, coming to you first. Um, you know, there are two major protest marches planned today, one from uh, the Red Fort to Shahid Park and the other from Mandi House to Shahid Park. Uh, give us a sense of uh, what the protesters are thinking right now, especially because uh, uh, if uh, we are given to understand that the Red Fort protest uh, has been denied police permission. Is that correct? Uh, that's true. In fact, uh, they never seek permission for 
uh, this protest. And uh, uh, the fact is that uh, uh, thousands are supposed to gather in the protest uh, uh, that's supposed to start around 11, 11.30 at uh, the Red Fort. Uh, now, for this particular protest, uh, Uday, uh, a call was given uh, by over uh, 60 organizations, uh, including PUCL and uh, uh, Swaraj India, uh, which is Yogendra Yadav's uh, uh, organization. Um, and, uh, of course, uh, um, they are saying that uh, the Citizenship Amendment Act is unconstitutional and they want uh, uh, to send out a message to the government that they must uh, uh, withdraw the act, uh, uh, which is why there's this nationwide uh, uh, protest which has been organized. Uh, parallelly, Uday, the protest is also supposed to take place in other cities such as Lucknow, uh, uh, Bangalore, uh, hmm. uh, and Mumbai. Certainly. Uh, in fact, speaking of Bengaluru, let me bring in Revati Rajivan, who's bringing us more details on what the situation is like in the state of Karnataka. Revati, Karnataka and Uttar Pradesh are the two big states which have a statewide Section 144 imposed. Uh, and uh, there were, in fact, uh, protests planned in Bengaluru, as far as we're aware. Uh, give us a sense of uh, what's really happening there. The police, uh, I believe, have asked protesters not to gather in protest against the CAA today. Well, that's right. Late last evening, uh, the uh, Home Department, uh, uh, the government announced that uh, the Section 144 that's going to be imposed uh, across Karnataka. And this is not just for today. It starts at 6 a.m. today and ends at 21st midnight. So for three days, the sec Section 144 imposed across the state of Karnataka. Now, protests were planned uh, in different parts of Bengaluru today, uh, starting from 11 a.m. to late evening by different organizations. There was a protest by uh, the left party, left-leaning parties. There was a protest by student organizations and various other citizens as well. Now, what the, the police commission of Bengaluru said last night, uh, late last night during a press conference, is that there were several organizations that came to us uh, for permission, and uh, none of them were given permission, but they went ahead and announced these protests. Uh, but considering what happened in other parts of the state, we have denied permission, and we have asked these uh, protesters to not gather in large numbers, not come out and protest. We have uh, refused them permission. We have denied the permission that they have asked for, so they cannot uh, come out and and hold any sort of procession or protest in any part of Karnataka for these three days. That is the uh, that is what uh, the Com Commission of Bengaluru said last night. But interestingly, after 21st midnight, when the uh, Section 144 will be uh, taken off, mm. on 22nd, uh, there is a rally, mega rally that is announced by the RSS in support of the CAA. This announcement came just a couple of uh, uh, hours after Section 144 was imposed across the state uh, for three days. So 21st midnight, until 21st midnight, uh, no protests are allowed across the state. But 22nd, you'll have a mega rally by the RSS in support of CIA. But in spite of this, we'll have to see today how many will actually follow that order because there are several citizens also who are following these hmm. messages that are coming on social media to uh, come and extend support to uh, for and against CAA and uh, ready to come and protest. So even on Tuesday, student organizations were denied permission to come and protest. But in spite of that, several people gathered uh, with placards and posters and shouted slogans and some of them were even detained in Bengaluru. So uh, today we'll have to see how many will actually follow the orders of the police and how many will go ahead and defy that and come out and protest. Right, and that is something that remains to be seen uh, nationwide as well and that's something that Runjun was uh, pointing out as well. Runjun, you were pointing out that uh, it's not just in Bengaluru and Delhi that these protests are taking place. There are in fact protests happening uh, across the country. We know that uh, there were protest marches planned in Lucknow as well, but UP police has now issued a warning to protesters saying that Section 144 has been imposed all over Uttar Pradesh. Um, uh, yesterday, in the backdrop of uh, what has happened in Aligarh Muslim University and also uh, Jamia Amelia Islamia University in the national capital, uh, the police is, of course, uh, careful because, uh, uh, you know, in, uh, of course, Aligarh Muslim University and also in uh, in Delhi, two places. Uh, this is uh, uh, the Jamia University and also uh, Srilampur area in East Delhi. We have seen the protests uh, uh, take a take a very sour turn. Uh, so, of course, the police being very very careful. And uh, Uday, like I was pointing out, the protesters are planned across the country. This is Bhubaneswar, Hyderabad, Bengaluru. Uh, uh, even in Delhi, there are a couple of marches which, which are going to take place today. Uh, then there's, of course, uh, uh, Kolkata, Bhopal, Lucknow, Nagpur, Chennai, Mumbai, uh, Pune. Uh, so, you know, several marches are 
uh, planned for uh, uh, today, Uday, and uh, people are actually speaking in one uh, voice against this very, uh, um, which many would say is a very uh, divisive mm -hmm. and uh, discriminatory act. Uh, uh, but this this uh, particular protest today is not just for CAA, but it's also for uh, NRC yeah. and uh, countrywide NRC and uh, NPR for that matter. Certainly. So the anger against the NRC and the CAA refuses to die down. Nationwide protests planned today, not just by opposition parties, but also by student groups and civil society activists. Thank you so much, Runjun Revati and Pallavi, for bringing us details on what is expected today. Big day ahead as far as these protests are concerned. Shifting focus now, the Delhi High Court will hear a PIL seeking the setting up of a fact-finding committee to look into the recent violence at the Jamia Millia Islamia University in New Delhi. The plea has sought judicial inquiry into the action taken by the police, including allegedly firing at students. It has also sought proper medical treatment and compensation for the injured students. Protesters torched four public buses and two police vehicles as they clashed with the police near New Friends Colony near the Jamia Millia Islam University during a demonstration against the amended Citizenship Act, leaving 30 cops and over 200 students injured. Explaining why they had entered the campus, the Delhi police, in one of its uh, three FIRs, FIRs into the incident, said that uh, there was stone pelting by miscreants and to identify them and to protect the students. They entered the campus. CNN News 18's Payal Mehta is joining me on the phone line with more details on that story. Payal, uh, the police has in fact given its clarification saying that they had to uh, pull out some miscreants from within the campus. Uh, but still several uh, very, very valid questions are going to now be raised. And this is why this PIL has sought a fact-finding committee into what really went on in the Jamia campus uh, after the police entered. All right, we seem to have lost that connection with Pyle there. We'll try and pass back to her. But that's the very latest. The Delhi High Court will today hear a PIL setting up, uh, uh, seeking the setting up of a fact-finding company. Sahil Murli Meghani, in fact, has been joining, is now joining us on the phone line. He's been tracking the story uh, since the violence broke out on the 15th of December. Uh, Sahil, as I was uh, saying earlier, you know, uh, of course, Delhi Police has given its clarification as to why it had to enter the campus and uh, pull out all those miscreants that it claims had infiltrated the campus. But the fact is that uh, this uh, PIL is now seeking a fact-finding committee because a lot of very serious allegations are now being made against the police itself. Uh, so this PIL was uh, filed uh, day before yesterday in the High Court, uh, and it's asking for two things. A, a fact-finding committee that looks into all the aspects of uh, Jamia's uh, violence, uh, the violence that took place uh, in the Jamia campus uh, on Sunday, uh, who um, uh, awarded the police that overstepped it, uh, uh, mandate or uh, were the students uh, provocative or were there unruly elements uh, which entered the campus and uh, um, disrupted the uh, peaceful movement that was being carried out by students. So all these aspects would be looked into uh, by that fact-finding committee. That's exactly what this petition is asking for. Uh, and apart from that, uh, the, the petition is also asking uh, for medical aid uh, to students um, Saying that some of these students are, are are financially not that very strong, and the state should uh, uh, bear the cost of, uh, uh, of 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 their treatment. Apart from this petition, another petition was filed just yesterday by Shai Mam of uh, Delhi's Jama Masjid, um, also uh, look, uh, asking uh, for for for, uh, for an investigation into into the violent incidents that took place in the Jamia campus on Sunday evening. Uh, but he's asking for either uh, uh, um, uh, SIT, Special Investigation Team-led investigation, or a CBI probe. So uh, that petition has also been admitted. That will also be uh, heard today along with uh, the petition um, that was filed on Mon on uh, 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 that was filed day before yesterday. Uh, we, we, we are told that uh, the petition would come up for hearing uh, at around uh, 11 or 11.15, 11.30 in the first half itself. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, so that's what we know so far about these two petitions. All right, Sahil Muli Begani getting us the very latest details of fact-finding committee on the entire incident that took place in Jamia Millia Islami on the 15th 